Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. So doing some more ladder here uh, with mono white humans and I've made a couple changes to the deck. First of all, if you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing or maybe sharing it with a friend who might also like the content. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back. I really do appreciate you. You guys are the backbone of the channel and I couldn't do it without you. Um, in addition, there's going to be a link to the uh, deck the deck list in the description, both on moxfield.com as well as untapped.gg. And then also there will be a link to all of my playlists, both for limited content and constructed content as well. So check those out if you're interested. Um, I do also want to give a shout out here to the, um, the members here of my channel. And I noticed that I did get another member here recently so thank you so much i really appreciate you guys you guys are amazing if you do want to consider becoming a member and getting early access to my content the uh, lowest level is uh, one dollar and 99 cents a month so if you're interested it's a great way to help to support the channel and support me and here's exactly how you do that if you would like to become a member and help support my channel you can do so just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, let's jump into the deck. So this is the deck that I ran for the majority of last month, trying to get as close to rank one mythic as possible. We ended up in about rank, I think about 527 by the end of the month. So we did end up getting the um, uh, play-in points here for the next qualifier play-in event, but didn't quite make the top 250. So that would have been, that would have been great. But it was a very strong deck and since then, the format and the meta has shifted a little bit. Um, part of the reason was from the Pro Tour, the, the best uh, or the winning list was a blue-white control deck that had just a ton of counter spells, um, especially one of the new cards, three steps ahead. So that, in addition to a full play set of um, No More Lies, made a deck that just relied heavily on counter spells to win the, win the day. And... Part of the strength of Mono White Humans is it does have a full playset of Cavern of Souls, but I think that with this format, that's not even enough anymore. And so enter one of the new cards, Grand Abolisher. Now, I kind of tried this card out a little bit last month, and it wasn't really doing much because at that time in the meta, there wasn't that much prevalence of a ton of counter spells, but that has shifted radically. And I think that there has been kind of a big push in both Demir as well as Azorius to enter, um, to include like a full play set of three steps ahead, in addition to either make disappear or no more lies. And it, there's a lot of counterplay. So with that, Grand Abolisher is a complete and total house. And this has just been so powerful against those kinds of decks. So really happy to include two copies here, make room for it. Um, the other card that's been you know, really, really good is with the rise of more control decks, Lava Spur Boots, giving all of my creatures essentially haste the turn they come in um, and Ward 1 is really big game against control decks. So I think even more than, you know, last month, the Singleton copy here is justified. Might even consider going up to two copies, but probably not more than that. But the Grand Abolisher has been a really nice addition and, and update here to the deck. So, um, yeah, really enjoying it. And other than that, so in order to make room for it, I shaved one copy of Skrelv and one copy of Thalia. Uh, Thalia is still very, very important. It, it really helps out in a lot of ways. But I think Grand Abolisher is almost even as good or potentially better right now just in the current meta with all the counter spells flying around so let's go ahead and jump into some games i 
I've also really been enjoying OTJ Draft, and I know I did one draft video a couple days ago, but I uh, have been really having a lot of fun with that format and thinking of maybe doing another draft video here coming up. So for those of you who like limited content, please put it in the comments. I would love to hear if you guys would be interested in seeing more drafts. All right, a little bit of a slow start. Got uh, action on two, but um, you know we do have some pretty powerful cards here, so happy to keep. All right, looks like we're up against Boros Convoke, most likely. Um, we've got the mana for Adversary on four. I could see playing it now just because this is such an explosive deck and the life gain really does matter. That being said, if we draw into Adeline, having Vanguard out is pretty nice. And if we can get to pump everything on turn four, that could be pretty good too. So... Yeah, I think overall I'm going to play the Copper Coat here, but I could certainly see a line where you'd play Adversary on two. Partially because the 3-1, they have, you know, such good blocks with, like, Goblin tokens, and um, you'd rather have this thing have two toughness if at all possible. All right, that was a nice pickup. Um, so the question now is, do we double spell or do we just uh, try to hold for this as a four drop? I think, again, just due to the explosive nature of this deck, um, especially since, I, since I've got two Knight, knight Errants here, I think I do want to double spell this turn. Um, and then we could push for two here, try to start racing. That would let their tokens get through. So I don't know if that's the best move, but I think let's just try to be a little aggressive here. We do have some lifelink. Most likely they're going to use this to kind of buff up their warden anyways. So I don't feel too bad about that attack. Okay, and they're setting up for an Imidane Recruiter turn, which is super scary. So I think as a result of that, we definitely want to push in with our adversary. Um, and I think we'll just have to Knight Errant for two instead of three. Although, actually, I suppose we could play the Thalia and then still Knight Errant for three. That, I think that'll actually work. But yeah, in the face of this Imidanes, let's see if they just play Imidanes, or if they have the land, let's assume they have the land, they can Epicure plus Imidanes, that hits us for 18, and then they will have 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 14, 19. But we'll have a blocker there, so we'll take 14. Yeah, so we don't die. Plus, we'll be gaining some life here. So I think that we can justify the attack. And now at a little bit of a healthier life total, this feels quite a bit better. Um, since we've got another Knight Errant here, like Abolisher doesn't really do much in this matchup. I think let's just go ahead and grab the officer here. So they're considering a major push here, but yeah, we'd be happy to trade Knight Errants if they give us the option. Okay, looks like they're looking for another turn of setup. Oh, wow. Double recruiter. Yeah, that's kind of terrifying.
Here we just want, definitely want to preserve our life total at all costs. Um, okay, so if they have a one, let's let's assume they didn't, don't even have a one drop. If they play just a single recruiter, we're looking at three, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And then it would be 22 if they do have a one drop to go with it. So we need at least one blocker there. So I guess let's go for, we could go for Adeline into Knight Errant and actually, I suppose we could do Officer plus Adeline into Knight Errant or potentially Skrelv. Yeah, maybe Skrelv makes more sense here actually. Oh, you know what? Um, we don't have enough white sources for all of that, so I think I'm just going to do Skrelv plus the 3 1 here into Knight Errant. This way, if they draw like case and we have Skrelv open, we could potentially prevent that from hitting one of our targets. So I'm not sure if it was better to do the two one drops into Knight Errant or just playing the Adeline. Um, yeah, I think maybe I like having the extra body. I'm, I'm not sure. All right, they're coming for it. So we can at least stop the recruiter with first strike. Trade for the four power creatures here, or four toughness creatures. And then I think, do we need to trade here? We're taking two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, dropping us to seven. They're planning to do it again next turn. So I think we definitely do want to trade again if possible. just to preserve our life total as much as possible here. All right, down to nine. Um, here, let's just go for Adeline. And then we can attack with Skrull since it can't block anyways. So next turn, if they don't draw any creatures, we're looking at three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15. If we block, we need to block at least three creatures. If they draw another creature, we'll need to block four. So I think it's not safe to attack with anything here except for Skrelv. Just assume they're gonna draw one drop or something like that. If they try to delay a turn by making two knight tokens, we can use Brutal Cathar to eat one of the tokens. Okay, that's a nice pickup also. And then here, can we afford to attack? 
So we're gonna definitely want, so if they draw into like another one drop, um, they're pushing two, four, six, eight. We need at least five blockers. So we can attack with probably the human token here. I guess if they draw like Gleeful Demolition, we're kind of up the creek. But I think we need to take some chances here. Actually, I guess we just attack with Adeline here. It's probably the safest bet. Just in case they draw like another... Because they could draw like reinforcements to have two creatures. If they draw, I think Gleeful Demolition, I think we're dead. But most other draws should be okay. Yeah, I think they need exactly Gleeful Demolition to get through enough damage. Nice. Opening hand looks great. Yeah, I'm really excited to have Abolisher against the uh, control decks. It's just been super, super good. It's funny how like its time like wasn't quite like right when the set came out. The meta hadn't shifted yet for like more counter spell heavy decks, and so it wasn't very good at first. But now that there is a lot more of that representation, like yeah, against this deck here. And sneaking it in before they can counter it is just going to be huge game. I guess technically we could have attacked first to see if they wanted to use their march. Now they have to. Now they get that choice. So probably should have attacked first, but this way I guess if they have like Elspeth Smite, it plays around that because now they can't do any of that nonsense. And also, randomly, opponents like won't realize the full effect of this card, and just <laughs> there are no battle tricks. You know, there's no tricks, nothing, when this guy's in play, on our turn. Like cavernous souls is great, but we didn't even need it here. So, do we go for copper coat? Is the real question. Um, I think it's probably safer to play brutal cathar here. Uh, reason being is if they we have to we want to do a check for um, temporary lockdown. So I think we just push, see what they do, or they're not going to do anything this turn. But I think we go for brutal Cathar here, just to play around it. And this way, if they pass, we get like a three three for a striker, which is pretty nice. And the ward is super relevant too with the pay three life. Yeah, I'm, I totally understand their main phase <laughs> March of World Otherworldly Light is. God, this card is so good against this deck. Abolisher is just amazing. All right, so now. I think we do the adversary play here. I mean, they do sort of get us if they've got um, lockdown, but we do get a turn of kind of beating them down a little bit. And there's still a couple ways off from uh, Sunfall. Plus it's not clear that they have the, uh, the white source. Yeah, and they can't even do Wandering Emperor. This is kind of hilarious. 
So they're sitting on like three steps ahead, probably. It's, yeah, they're just dead. Grand Abolisher, you are the man. It is one of the uh, few times that I've really enjoyed <laughs> the uh, blue-white matchup. That's just normally such. It's just such a painful matchup, but uh, Abolisher really does turn the tables on that on that deck. All right, opening hand looks really good. We've got enough land and stuff to do. Uh, no one drop, but good twos and threes. Okay, here's another blue-white deck. So I think we just want to go mana efficiency here and play Vanguard. Now that they effectively have eight counter spells in their deck, I guess they only have like four no more lies on turn two. So there is an argument here for trying to sneak through our Adeline if they don't happen to have a no more lies, but there's a decent chance that they do. Um, so we could try to push for that. Otherwise, we could try to set up with some other cards. I, to be honest, I think Adeline is the play. I just hope they haven't got it. Like, they could have removal for it, too. But yeah, that was really good. Like, because like if they don't have no more lies in hand, you know. Or this could just be a different deck. But like once you hit turn three, if they have four copies of three steps ahead, then like they have eight cards that will for sure counterspell it. So it's better to try to get it in while they only have two mana up. So we've got, a, I guess, an extra turn before they hit us with um, Sunfall. We could just try to keep pushing this board. I think there's a decent argument here though for trying to do like brutal cathar to take away one of their blockers um yeah so i think let's do that and then actually if we just attack with adeline we could go for knight errant here as well uh, we are definitely missing some damage by doing that is that worth it? Um, probably not. We'd probably just push. So the nice thing is if they have um, lockdown next turn, they only get the tokens and the copper coat. So here I think I'm probably okay putting scroll out because it's like better in this in this board than it would be like later on. Um, and this way if they play like another like token or whatever we can just use Skrelv to push Adeline through for a whole bunch of damage if they don't happen to have lockdown here and they're a turn away from Sunfall so they need lockdown or something where they're in pretty rough shape I think the key important play there is to not try to get value with Knight Errant that turn and just try to get your damage in while you've got it before Sunfall comes and then use like Knight Errant to like recoup value later on in the game if they end up like board wiping. Yeah, and if they've got removal for Adeline, like they have to do it now because of Skrelv. Okay, 
Okay, so they're just kind of stalling for time. All right, well, that makes sense. Um, they could have March, I guess, here. So do we hold back the scrub? We probably do. So if we don't add anything to the board, <laughs> okay, or they could just give up, that works too. I was gonna say, we just push in with everything except Skrelv there. Because I think the one damage is like not quite worth the protection from potential march. Hand looks great. We do have double Ganjo, but I mean, we can float the uh, the mana for for one turn if need be. Okay, so they've got Ruckus going. We could try to hold to see if they have. Um, the slick shot on turn two but i think we want to get stuff down because like that's how we win obviously so i think i'm just going to play abolisher here it's not super great in this matchup because they're mostly just going to be doing everything on their own turn anyways but at least like no tricks on our turn is kind of nice and So the question here is, do we want to play Lava Spur Boots plus Vanguard? I think we kind of want to play Vanguard and then maybe hold March just in case they have some nonsense next turn or we decide that we want to get rid of their Phoenix Chick. But I don't think we're really using it this turn because we don't want to give them extra value by drawing a card here off the, the Ruckus. Actually, you know, I think I'm just going to go with the Lava Spur Boots. Because we really want to keep this Knight Errant here and potentially get it going next turn. So I think just being mana efficient here. Just because I don't want to throw this value away for the march. Okay, so now they've got Ruckus. Two Ruckuses, I guess. It's kind of hard to see here, but... So this is kind of fun. We can go for Knight Errant and then replay Siganjo and then give it haste. That feels pretty good. Could also play out the Skrell, but I think we just want to push damage here. Because now, thanks to the boots, like we've got a pretty threatening board. Yeah, and that's going to do it. Double Murex is a little rough, but we've got three lands, so I'm not going to complain. Um, and this uh, looks, looks good. A little bit of interaction, some early stuff. We've got some stuff to do on three. Okay, up against World Souls Rage deck. Thalia is potentially pretty good here, but the most important thing against this deck is you have to kill their Nyssa the instant it shows up into play. Like, the Analysts are annoying, but they are not nearly as dangerous as the Nyssa's. So 
So I think for that reason, let's just play. Do we play Thalia here? <sighs> yeah, we probably play Thalia. Um, Because we can still, we'll still have enough to get the, the Nissa if we need to. All right, they're hoping to just use Analyst there on next turn. So I guess now we just get rid of their Analyst. They might still have the Nissa, which is annoying, but we have to respect this Analyst, I think. Yeah, because they're getting back way too much value here. So we can't let them untap with it. Um, all right. Unfortunately, we've got to pitch a card here, but what to cut? I think it might be Night Errant. Like, we might not have time to like tap out for that adversary is good if we get another land can pump everything up officer is actually officer we could get rid of yeah I can see getting rid of officer here well I suppose we could have played it this turn but we kind of, like, it's good to go into Night Errant, so it's sort of chicken and an egg situation. Um, yeah, maybe it would have been better to get rid of Night Errant there and then play the Officer. Or I suppose Adeline, since we aren't going to have the double white. That might have been wrong. So, okay, that I mean, that's that's not Nissa, so I don't particularly care about it. Um, we could go copper coat and push, but I think Night Errant's just better, right? Yeah, so maybe last turn we should have pitched the Nissa so we'd have an extra creature here. Are we worried about damage output? I don't think as much. So I, I think maybe veteran is not quite as important here. So let's go for the added damage with officer. That's close though. I mean, I could definitely see taking like Lunark veteran over officer there. Like, the veteran is probably, like, a safer hedge. But if this if this version is running World Souls Rage, which I assume it is, you know, it's more of a race than, like, a life being super important. Okay, this is, like, the colossal sea turtle nonsense version. Which is, which is also quite good and super annoying. Um, so now we could go for adversary. We could also go copper coat plus an adversary to try to push even more damage. That way they could trade their Shigeki with our officer, but I don't know that we care. So maybe we just do that instead. Okay, let's start here. And I think we just want to maximize damage output. There is a possibility that they have like a board wipe next turn though, which is certainly possible. Okay, that's actually crazy. super awkward. Oof. Um. Yeah, I did not see Get Lost coming, unfortunately. 
That's another reason why <laughs> Grand Abolisher is an amazing card, because you don't have to deal with that kind of BS. Okay, so now we could play adversary and try to push here. Do we have time to go for Knight Errant? I'm not sure that we do. So... They can get back removal. They can get back depopulate, actually. They can't do it this turn, though. So it's a turn setup. So we might not have time to go for Knight Errant. I guess we'll have one, one decent attack with it. Yeah, I guess given that, I think maybe the play here is try to get Knight Errant and then pump and big push. We could have also searched for two and then attacked the Knight Errant there, I suppose. But I think they're just bringing back Shigeki this turn anyways. We don't really want Veteran here, I think. We just want uh, more land or other stuff. Yeah, because now they, they return Shigeki, and then next turn they can channel to get back, depopulate. So we'll have one attack phase before all that goes down. I mean, they still need the, like, the second white source, so there is that. But never mind, they just, they just got it there with their Field of Ruin. Although, actually, they do need two green to channel it, so it's not... It's going to take an extra turn for setup for them. So we potentially have two attack phases. Yeah, because they're going to need double green in order to channel this to get back the depopulate, unless they just drew a uh, sunfall or something. So is there any reason here for us to maybe consider using Thalia this turn? Because um, it's going to cost them three mana next turn to channel to get back the depopulate. So it'll cost a total of seven mana to play the depopulate. If we have Thalia, it would cost eight, but then they, if they draw a land, which I'm sure they, they have in that many cards, they could still do it. Yeah, I think it's it's just worth going for the adversary play here. I think we have like a good attack and let's try to get, get in the most of it.
So we drop them down to seven. And then the question is if they can stitch together the uh, enough green mana to get back the depopulate. Yeah, because lockdown doesn't do it. Yeah, they've got the green mana so they can do it, unfortunately. If we had played the Thalia, they wouldn't have enough mana. No, they, they still would, never mind. They, they could still cast it. So now I guess our plan is to try to like set up like Skrelv plus Adeline to try to force it through. Okay, that was very strange. I'm surprised they didn't go for the obvious play of board wipe. I mean, I guess that's okay. So what's the play this turn? I mean, they can just board wipe again next turn, unfortunately. <sighs> Adeline will let us push a little bit of damage, but it's not amazing. I think the play here is actually just Skrelv, and then we can make a Murex token end of turn. That way we're threatening lethal, potentially. And if they board wipe, we can have a creature at end of turn. We're definitely in a super rough spot for sure because they have like a bunch of land to get back yeah they're gonna get a ton of life from that What we really needed was like a march so we could like end of turn march their temporary lockdown okay that's pretty brutal Whew. that's probably just game right there Okay, so now, I mean, like, we're, we're super dead, I think, because they can just get all the life back. But if we double buff adversary here, we can make this a 6-6 six, six, and then make it pro-white so they can't block it with the, uh, or hexproof from white so they can't block with Knight Errants. It's probably the play. Like, I mean, I think we're just dead, unfortunately, but... 
It'll be a fun way to go out. They just block with a token, they're fine now. And now they can just get back. Um, well, they'll gain a billion life and then they can wipe the board. Well, I guess they're not taking the obvious line and trying to set up a board wipe here. We've got a Ganjo, so we can do Adeline. Plus Thalia. Yeah, I don't want to just waste all of our cards though, because like they will definitely go and get it. Um, eh, I guess we force them to, to do it. Yeah, so now they just channel get it back and wipe the board again, I think. I mean, there's so many ways we can lose here. Yeah, there it is. Although, strangely enough, this is the perfect draw. So now we can get back these guys here. And actually, if we march, so we've got six mana. So we march for three, we can leave two up and then be able to pump everything once. Or we could play the veteran. I think we just leave this up. Try to do it for end of turn. They probably just world souls us out, but you know, if they don't have it, then we've got this.
there's the road souls rage okay well so much for that We put up a decent fight okay let's take a look at the stats but yeah really liking this deck overall all right for the current season we are currently 88 percent win rate so seven wins and one loss so really happy with this deck yeah only losing so far to the uh, world soul nonsense deck so uh definitely try this deck out i think it's really strong right now especially with the inclusion of the grand abolishers and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching, and you guys are awesome.